have a word. So the Lord gave me this word. And it's in Ezekiel, Ezekiel 12, verse 1. And it says, again, a message came to me from the Lord. Son of dust, he said, you live among rebels who could know the truth if they wanted to, but they don't want to. They could hear me if they would listen, but they won't, for they are rebels. So now put on a demonstration to show them what being exiled will be like. Pack whatever you can, carry on your back, and leave your home. Go go somewhere else. Now I'm going to stop right there. I have spoke to the Lord. And there are people that are in situations. And you are around among people who basically do not respect what you say. They don't respect what you say. It's almost like somebody like running over you. When you tell them that this is what I need you to, it's almost like boundaries. They go past that. So there's no respect whatsoever. And the thing is, is that they can lead a lot of other people like this. And also like they can see people doing this, but they don't tell them the truth. They won't tell them the truth. They'll let them, they'll let them just keep doing it. They won't tell them the truth. They'll let them continue to keep just doing things like that. And they won't tell the truth because they are basically a rebel, a rebel. And a rebel is someone who breaks the rules, resists authority, or otherwise challenges the status quo by doing things in a non-traditional way. Now, the part right there that says they break the rules, they resist authority otherwise. So like, say like, okay, I was in a situation whereas I told this person that I don't want it to be this way. I don't want, this is how I feel about it. But they were just like, this is, this is an example. They were just like, whatever, I don't care, uh, whatever, I hope things work out and I'm doing this anyway, right? And they do this all the time. So I was asking the Lord, do you want me to talk about this? And God says, yes. And this is the word he gave me. He said, there is some situations where you are in and people do not respect you. Let me say this. When you go somewhere and you're not celebrated, you're just tolerated. You're not, um, they don't, they don't basically tolerate means like, you know, I'm glad you're here, but you could have really, I don't care if you're here or not. They don't care, but they don't want to see you succeed. They don't want to, these are, God has demonstrated these as rebels. They don't want to see you succeed. They don't care about, there's no boundaries. They've crossed your boundaries. They don't care about your boundaries to them. They're like this and you're like this. So they don't care. And, 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 and God can rebuild you and, and heal you from things, but you, you, you want to be around these people. You want to be in the presence of these people. You want to be in their company. And, and, and let me say this. I used to be that way. I want to be in the, in the company of people that did that. People that didn't want to see me succeed. They would talk about me when I leave the room. They would talk about me when I'm in the room. They would. And I felt like the Lord wanted me around this, but really it was breaking me inside, tearing me up inside, breaking me, breaking, like destroying me in, in, in the inside. And I thought that, okay, I, I have to forgive them, but I also need to deal with this and let this be this way. God said, no, you don't. Because what's happening is they're destroying what God is rebuilding you. So it's almost like God will heal you and then they'll destroy it because they have, it's a rebel. Someone who breaks the rules, resists authority or otherwise challenges the status quo by doing things in a non-traditional way. So say that you're this person who uh is is kind and loving and everything and they just take advantage of it because they look at you like um there's no boundaries or like say for instance when you when you're broken say you're going through a lot of brokenness the enemy knows that you're you was you went through a lot of brokenness or maybe you're in brokenness but so then there's there's these people that are strong spirited and there's the people that are weak spirited now weak spirited doesn't mean you're a bad person it just means doesn't mean that bad about you. It just means like 
you've been going through some things and when they say something, you listen to what they say and it will set you back. And it's been doing it. It does it all the time. Like this person will speak it. They don't care. They're self. They are basically strong willed. So their strong will pushes them forward. They don't care if they push people down. They don't care what they do. You'll tell them your opinion. They don't give, care about your opinion. They don't, whatever, it doesn't matter. This is what God said to do. He said, again, a message came to me from the Lord. Son of dust, he said, you live among rebels who could who know the truth if they want to, but they don't want to. They could hear me if they if they would listen, but they won't for they are rebels. So now put on a demonstration to show them what things, what being exile, what being exile will be like. Pack whatever you can, carry on your back and leave your home. Go somewhere else. Go in the daylight so they can see for perhaps even yet they will consider what this means. Even though they are such rebels, bring your baggages outside your home during the daylight so they can watch. Then leave the home at night just as uh, captives do when they begin doing long march to distant lands. Dig a tunnel through the city wall while they are observing and carry your possessions out through the hole. As they watch, lift your pack to your shoulders and, wa and walk away into the night. Muzzle your face and don't glaze around. All this is a sign to the people of Israel of the evil that will come upon Jerusalem. Let me say this. There are people who are the, who are trying to damage God's people. And let me say this. There are even people that are Christians and they are trying to damage God's people. They it's like almost like no, they don't have no respect for people. And they think that it's OK to live this way as a Christian. And God is saying that he wants you to leave. When they were when they were trying to throw Jesus off the cliff, Jesus left. He didn't stay around. He said, if you're not accepted, shake the dust off your feet. He didn't stay around. He left. And this is what God is saying. You are around rebels, people that don't respect authority. They don't care about authority. You know, and a lot of times, sometimes it'd be family members. They'd be the same way. Like you can be, and I'm not saying this as a perfect, you're a perfect person. No, what I'm saying is that they don't respect your boundaries. They don't respect you. And, 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 and they don't want to see the best in you. They don't want to see you do good. They, they tolerate you. They don't celebrate you. You're not celebrated. They don't care. And so you're thinking it's a traditional thing to be around family members or to be around these people because, you know, that's the way to go because you feel like you owe that to them because, but at the same time, they're rebels. So they're not listening. Some people don't listen to God. So they, they mistreat you. They, um, don't have respect. They're not willing to say, I'm sorry if they did something wrong. It's just, they're not, it's, they don't care. Now, what I've done in the past, because for me, I have been like where I was, you know, pushed around by people that do this. I was pushed around because I was broken. God, I hadn't got healing yet from God. So I was pushed around. So when people would, when I, I, I always allowed them to push my buttons and to, um, you know, you got to come to this gathering. It doesn't matter how we treat you. You got to see what I'm saying. It doesn't matter how we treat you. You still need to be a part of this because you're our family or you're our friend or you're this or you're that, but they refuse to change. There's no change. There's, they don't want to respect you. There's no, now when first off, when we're Christians, we should respect each other. That's, that's, that's just the normal, what it should be. But when you tell people, different things about how you feel about something. They don't respect what you say. Yes, we will be persecuted, but no, we do not have to stay around it. And God is saying to take your bags and leave. You are around rebels and rebels. Again, the definition of a rebel is someone who breaks the rules. They break the rules. Even if it's God, God tells us how to treat people. They're not paying attention to them either. Then there's no respect and resist authority or otherwise challenge the status quo. Now, when people do this and they have done this to you for so long periods of time, you can forget about them respecting you. That's not going to happen. They're not respecting you. Not at all. Mm -mm. 
but you can respect them all day long. Cause they, you remember how, um, Haman, Haman was with Mordecai. He didn't, he didn't bow to him. So he got very angry and wanted to kill him. He wouldn't bow. Mordecai wouldn't bow to Haman and Haman got angry, very angry. And this is what is happening. You are around rebels. So God is saying to demonstrate, take your bags and leave. It says, son of dust. He said, you live a among rebels who could know the truth if they wanted to, but they don't want to. They can know the truth, but they don't want to. They know they treat you right, but they don't want to. And they don't plan on doing it. They've been doing it probably this long and they're not going to ever. God's probably been working on their heart and they just don't respect you. They look down on you. Some people look down on you. And you just, they're up here, but no one's up here but God. And God doesn't want you tied into any relationship that's like that. It doesn't matter. Yes, forgive them. Yes, you should respect them as well. But when there's no, it's it's like almost like you're just casting your pearls before the swine. You cast your pearls before the swine. And you want to be a part of something because you feel broken. You feel for some reason you, you want to be around people who drag you. And that, that could mean the reject, the uh, rejection. You know, they say you have a rejected spirit. Some people, not only is their spirit rejected, they have a, a rejection spirit going on, but they feel like they deserve to be treated this way. So then you don't know who you are in Christ Jesus. I would say that it's more of, you don't know who you are in Christ Jesus. For me, I didn't know that God loved me. I didn't know. Here's the thing. We're all not the same. I respect who they are, but they need to respect who I am as well. And it doesn't mean that I'm trying to control anything, but I don't have to be a part of that. If the person doesn't respect me, thank you, Holy Spirit. I don't have to entertain it because it's, I have to protect the Holy Spirit. I have to protect the anointing that God, not, not protect the Holy Spirit, but protect the anointing. The Holy Spirit's on the inside, but protect what God has put on the inside of me. And they come to damage it because they already look at you like you're less than than them. And, and God is calling it a rebel. Someone who breaks the rules, resists authority or otherwise challenge the status quota by doing things in a non-traditional way. They want to do it their way. They don't care about nobody else's way. It's their way or the highway. And God said, I want you. He said, but they don't want to. They could hear me if they want to, want it, would listen, but they won't. For they are rebels. So now put on a demonstration to show them what being exiled will be like. Pack whatever you can. Carry on your bag, your back, and leave your home. Go somewhere else. Leave. Because when you when people continue to make a person feel less than and they continue to keep doing this, what we what what God is saying that you can't change this. You can't change this situation. And that's what I used to try to do. I used to try to say, well, if I show up to the party, if I come to the party, if I do this, or do that, they won't talk about me in my face. They won't talk about me behind my back. And God has shown me now, whereas, you know, he, he shows you, he's been showing you, but there was times where I didn't get it. And God shows you that these people do not care for you. They don't care for you. And it could be family members. They don't care for you. And it's okay. It's all right. Because God will bring your tribe. But you want to be a part of a tribe that wants to throw you on the barbecue grill or throw you in the pit of in the fire pit and roast you and make a mockery of you and laugh at you. It's like somebody throwing doing target practice on you because they they don't think you're worth much. And that's not the case. God does not want us to be. Yes, we will be persecuted, but you don't have to be among it. You don't have to be around that. Because what happens is that God has put something on inside of you. They're going to damage it up. And then you can't do what God calls you to do. You gonna, you, you, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're not healing you. They're trying to break you. The enemy is using them to break you. So then they become rebels. And what I all, what I picture is like just watching a movie back in the days where there's like a bunch of rebels riding motorcycles or a bunch of rebels who's breaking in houses and, you know, just, doing damage to the house or doing damage to people, picking on people. You see these bullies where they're at school and they're picking on that person. They only want the person to show up at the party so they can pick on them and they can pick, 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 pick what do you call it? Not only pick on them, but uh, be, belittle them. 
you know, like say all these smart things in front of them. Like I'm superior. I'm smarter than you. I'm this, I'm that. God doesn't want you to be a part of that. It's you're being belittled. You're being belittled and you don't have to be a part of that. And I had to learn the hard way. And God had to tell me, you don't have to be a part of this. You keep thinking you have to be a part of because they're your friends. You've been knowing them for your, or because they're your family or you, if people can't respect you and they're Christians, that's really bad. But if people can't respect you, period, because they can break, continue to keep breaking what God is fixing in you. And God doesn't want you crying out to God, but you're going right back to the same area. Crying out to God, you're going, yes, God wants us to tolerate people, but you can't go somewhere that broke you. You got to stay away. You got to stay away. You got to stay away. And God said to demonstrate this, take your bags and leave. And also it says, moving down the page, it says, bring your baggages outside your home during the daytime so they can watch. Then leave the house at night, just as captives do when they begin their long march March to a distant land. That means you're going somewhere else. That's not where you're supposed to be. That's not your land. Dig a tunnel through the city wall while they are observing and carry your possessions out through the hole. As they watch, lift your pack to your shoulders and walk away into the night. You're gone. So they don't see you no more. And sometimes it has to be that way where God puts you somewhere. And this is like, it brings, it, it kind of like gets me because I know there's some people who's going through it because I've experienced it and it's not a good feeling. And God said to walk away, walk away, walk away. And it says that, it says that muffle your face and don't glaze around. Don't even look up. Don't even just keep going. All this is a sign to the people of Israel or of Israel of the evil that will come upon Jerusalem. God said, leave. Sometimes God is dealing with people and he wants you to move. And, 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 and not only people that are in that circle, they sometimes, the other people that are in the circle, they think it's okay with this behavior. And instead of us showing them that is not the right behavior, the people that's doing it, the, maybe there's several people or whatever people doing it, but they don't want to change it. So they'll keep doing it. And it keeps just, they're like, you're like the, the person that comes to the party where they, they can play target practice, <laughs> target practice or talk down to you, be little you. Let me see what you got. So I can talk about it. Oh, you don't got more than me. I'm better than you. I'm this. I'm telling you, Hammond, Hammond, Hammond was the same way with Mordecai. He got angry when the man didn't bow to him. He got mad. If they, if it's like they have to, some people have to be in that position and nobody is in that position. No man, no woman is over God. But when it goes that way, God said, leave, leave. Don't even look around, leave and let them see you walk into the night. You're gone. You know how they used to say, some people don't miss you until you're gone. Or when they, when they had you, they didn't know how to treat it. And, and, and when I was around, it used to, it used to mess with every relationship I had because it, it, I was off balance. If I'm getting belittled by friends or I'm getting belittled by family members, my other relationships suffer because then I'm going to be like, you know, I'm constantly thinking, you know, until God healed me and seeing that these people that I'm doing this to are not bad, but that other stuff was rubbing off on me. And those people kept breaking me. That's what they want. They want a bit to break you so that they can mess up your life. And then you won't become nothing. At least they think you don't because God's always working on you. So you're going to become something always. And you're not set to fail. But you have to come away from those situations, those relationships. You have to and you got to walk away. And then let God do whatever he needs to do. Sometimes we'd be in the way and God be trying to deal with people. He said, move. I don't care who told you to, to come and participate. Do not. God said it's time for you to go. It's time for you to go. God seen 
he knows what's in their heart and he heard their conversations when you wasn't in the room and it's time for you to go. It's time to leave. No more, no longer. It does not matter. Some people have been in these situations for years and they couldn't understand why, why every time I turn around when I leave or I'm around somebody, I have bad energy when I leave or I, or I feel busted when I leave or I feel like I don't want to carry on or I feel suicidal or I feel this way or I feel that way. You're around rebels. You're around people who do not respect you no matter who you are, what you do. They're not going to respect you. You're trying to search and get something that's not ever going to be given to you unless God makes them respect you. They could, like he's, God said right here in the, in the word, they li you live among rebels who could know the truth if they wanted to, but they don't want to. They could hear me if they would listen, but they won't. So God's been telling them, don't treat that person like that. Don't do this to them. That person really cares about you. Stop doing that. Don't do that. And they don't care because it's something on the inside of them that they feel threatened by who you are. You're a good person. You're a kind person. And this isn't a moment to get, you know, all like you're all that, not that, but they see you as a person that I just don't like them, but they'd rather be around you just to mock you. Oh, I just want to be around you. Then when you tell them how you feel about something, they don't even care to hear it. It's almost like they turn their ears off to you. They don't respect you. They don't care what you're, what, who, what you said you're doing. I remember somebody asked me, you doing what? And then when I told them what I was doing, it was like, oh, let me, let me tell you what I'm doing. It was like, it doesn't matter. Matter of fact, what you got going on. I remember somebody even told me this matter of fact, what you got going on is going to close down. You know, you're not going to have that any longer. Or, and then when, when something happens with what you're, maybe God shut a door, they automatically think, well, you went down, you're doing bad, you're doing this. God does not want you around that. No. Mm -mm. That, that would be the person wants to see you fail. And it's terrible. But that's what we're dealing with because the enemy, the enemy has convinced them that this behavior is fine. Sometimes it's been going on forever, so it's okay. They want to hear, they just want to hear, tell, let somebody tell me what they're doing so I can talk about it. And you get, you get in these circles, you get a whole lot of gossiping going on. Lots of it. A lot of gossiping. And we already know that that's not even supposed to be happening, but you get a lot of it. And guess what? You're the, you're the one that they're gossiping about. God said, leave, leave. I don't know who this is for, but you're going through a situation just like this, what I'm talking about. And God is telling you to pick your bags up and leave, leave. Don't put your head up and say, did I make the right decision? Did I, you know, looking around it, leave, leave. Yes, seek the father. But don't seek people. See, what I was doing is I kept, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, uh, make them angry or I don't want to make them sad. If I don't attend this, if I don't do this, if I don't do that, I don't want to, I don't want to hurt their feelings. And they was tearing mine up. Do you hear me? They was damaging me bad. And people say, yeah, but you know who you are in Christ Jesus. Yeah, I did. But every time I would go around them, it would, it would repeat itself all over again, all over again. And now I know who I am in Christ Jesus, but I'm not going to go back with what God repaired in me. And he told me, don't go around it. He don't even want me around it because I got you over here doing something else. I don't want you around that. That's what God told me. I don't want you around that. They know they're not supposed to do that, but they don't care. And people, when I'm sorry, but when people do that, they don't love you. Mm -mm. That's not love. Love them. Love the person, but hate the sin. But they don't love you, but you don't have to be a part of it. And I, for many years, thought that I had to, and I would go around it. And I would be doing so well that I'd get around them, and it just seemed like I would take a nosedive. I wouldn't go all the way like those died, but it, it, it seemed like somebody hit my plane. It's almost like somebody trying to shoot you out of the air when you're, when you're in a plane. 
and you can feel the jealousy, but you would, you would, you would just, you, cause you love the people. So you would just get past it. But God said, uh, uh-uh. well, you actually really hear God. He tells you no. And that's what he told me. No, I don't want you around it. So who do you obey them or God? He knows what's best for you. So then you can, you might not be able to attend some gatherings and that's okay. Cause we're going to be gathering in heaven soon, very soon. So if I miss a few get togethers here on earth, I'm okay with that. So that I can, so that I, I'm going to make it to heaven, but I'm also, there's people crossing my path that God has put in my path for me to, to encourage them, to tell them about Jesus. And I can't do that when I'm going in a place where people are just, uh, eating off of my tree and leave, they leave nothing. They just pick from your tree and leave nothing. You're giving all your fruit, but they leave nothing for you. Nothing. They give nothing. They take, but they don't give. You cast in your pearls before the swine. And sometimes the devil doesn't even want them to see it because everybody, oh, that ain't me. I would never do that. I don't, I don't do that. That's not how I am. But they don't need to step back and look and see. Go ask God. Some people really need to go ask God, but they won't. It's been going on for so long that some people are immune to it. The devil has them like his type of circle and they're destroying people inside and they have no clues to see that they are. But once God pulls you away from that and heals you, he don't want you going back in that no more. Forgive, but move on. You know, forgive, but move on. People talk about you, how you look, talk about what you got, what you live in, what you, your children, just everything. Just, I mean, shred you. So pretty much you're, you're standing there looking like, well, the Lord ain't, you start questioning your life. Maybe I am a bum. Maybe I am this. Maybe I that. Uh uh. You need people that's going to be encouraging. You need your tribe that's going to pray for you. You know, them people ain't praying for you, right? No one's praying for you that's doing that. They're praying for you, praying on you. P-R-E-Y. Not P-R-A-Y. So God said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to leave. Leave. And you're going to go and meet people that will accept you. It'll accept you. Because now you're ready. You've been healed. This is harvest season and you have been restored. And no longer does God want you back where you were at first. No more. I pray that this message helps you. Share, like, and subscribe. I thank you for being a part of this this channel. Like this because it makes it generate through YouTube. And if you share it, to share for someone else. God is doing something amazing in your life and no longer does God want you to entertain the foolishness when I say entertain be a part of it you know how somebody says they not laughing with you they laughing at you oh yeah but you're crazy for thinking that nah you're not crazy you're not crazy You're not crazy. Because that's what's next. They'll try to make you feel like you're crazy. That ain't what we're doing. When I mean, technically it really is. I know. I've been there. And God wants you to move on. I pray this message helps you. God bless you. Be blessed.